was I able to give you guys value? Do you guys feel like you learned anything to help you guys out and starting a business? How did you guys feel? Well, yeah, absolutely, I think so. Yeah, because, I mean, we had a bunch of questions before. We was kind of bouncing off each other and watching a thousand videos. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just helped us sort all that out. We so did appreciate it. Certainly appreciate it. I appreciate I you it was too. A great conversation. We appreciate it for sure. How you yeah, feel, Mr. Sure. Aaron? <laughs> yeah, you know, anytime you 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 gotta understand that you gotta invest in yourself, and uh, just like you in any business, it's always good to find someone that's willing to help. That's <coughs> willing to help uh, pass on knowledge. Uh, I tell everybody, you know, in the field I'm in, which is the automotive field, I don't mind helping people. Uh, I feel like God can give me this gift. To hold to myself, and anytime you have something that's uh, be willing to, that's willing to give, uh, it's, it, it's always good to pass it on. There's nothing is we only cripple ourselves as as, uh, as people if we try to hold the knowledge in. Exactly. So with you being able to pass it on to somebody else, okay, everybody tries to make a dollar, but at the same time, knowledge is power. Yeah. And pass it on to the next generation, and that's what you're doing now. You know, I'm a little bit older, but at the same time, <laughs> I'm not afraid. Hey, it ain't never too late. Yeah. And I appreciate y'all time too. Like I said, man, we we booked this for an hour. It took I don't know how long it took. It probably was yeah. around too. It don't matter. It don't matter. Like I said, I wanted y'all to have everything. Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Untro Mike back with another video with an Untro a short for entrepreneur. If you guys don't know, I'm running non-CDL hot shot with a 31 plus 5 gooseneck trailer. Um, and I've been doing it for about for about six months. Prior to that, I had about four to six months of doing a box truck in my previous business. And I was actually a company driver for a month before I started my own business. But there are a lot of things that you guys should know before jumping out into the industry. And one of the most important things you can learn is your cost per mile to operate. Now this video is of course about Hot Shot, but it also pertains to None CDL and CDL box trucks. Really, anybody, as long as you got your expenses down, this uh, this way to calculate your cost per mile works the same for everybody. So there may be some tweaks and numbers that you guys can, of course, manipulate to what makes sense for you guys, like cost of food, hotels, if you get hotels or not. But that's that's the game. You got to kind of know what you're gonna be doing before you get out on the road. So I hope this video helps. Make sure you hit that like that like button and subscribe. If, if, if you don't do anything else, like, subscribe, and drop a comment down on which market you think is better, box truck or hot shot, because that might be my next video idea due to having about four to six months of experience in both of them and knowing the numbers in both of them and knowing the cost to operate in both of them, which that is like the biggest difference. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Stay tuned. So first we're just gonna go over your, what is cost per mile? So yeah, you, your cost per mile to operate is usually known as your cost to move freight on the spot market. The spot market is basically booking loads off of DAT a lot of new people are gonna be doing that using DAT, truck stop, one, two, three, low board, uh, Selexis if you're doing box trucks, but usually you're not gonna have anything dedicated. I mean, if you're going the box truck route, you have Amazon where you can be home every night. But for the most part, if you're getting in, you're probably just gonna be running loads off the, the low board or with a dispatcher who's basically gonna be using that low board to book you loads. Um, so knowing your cost per mile will help not only you, but also your dispatcher when booking your freight, booking you freight. And if you, if you are booking loads less than your cost per mile, it can be de detrimental, <laughs> my bad, to your profit and loss at the end of the month or the year. So what a lot of people do is they see the numbers that we make on YouTube and they don't really understand the breakdown and expenses and what it really takes to make money. So, Cause they're, you know, they're a some people who will say, you know, I got five thousand dollars 
uh, on my truck right now, or I'm gonna make $5,000 by the end of the week. And when you hear that, you just think, man, it don't matter how much I'm spending in the fuel. It don't matter how much I'm spending in the hotel. It don't matter how much my insurance is for the month. It don't matter how much my car note is. It don't matter that the light bill coming out this week. It don't matter that the Cox bill coming out next week. Like those, those are the type of things that you as an entrepreneur, once all the expenses are on you, you're gonna constantly think about and you're gonna constantly have to manage how much you're gonna have to pay yourself personally, how much you need to be keeping in your business when this expense come out. And it's a lot, like I can't even explain all of it in this video, but this is basically like a basic breakdown of most of the business expenses that you will have running your business. So let's get on to the next one. Oh my bad. So things you need to know. If you want to uh, calculate your cost per mile, it's not as simple as getting a bunch of uh, quotes from rental companies and insurance companies because uh, that stuff is going to vary. Like you need to do at least about one month over the road to kind of know what you spent in expenses. And if you know kind of like what you, if you can at least predict what you believe you'll um, spend and you got to keep a realistic number in your head you can kind of know how much it's going to cost you. The most important part, especially on the box truck side, is going to be that rental rate. Like you, that rental rate is going to be really big. And once you start taking that like $500 a week and 20 cent per mile and you do 10,000 miles for the month and knowing it's going to be another 2,500, what? No, $2,000 along with the $500 a week. So you spending four thousand dollars just to operate with just that truck alone, not truck insurance, not maintenance, not your salary, not the load board, not the ELD. So this is why this video is going to be very helpful because it's a lot of expenses that we don't talk about as often as we should. But that's why I'm making this video. So you need to know your overhead expenses. You need to know your average mile per week, mileage per week, or for the month for fuel expenses. You need to know your mileage per gallon, on average, loaded and empty, you can combine them. Um, your insurance monthly or yearly expense. You need to know your hotels, your food, miscellaneous per month, uh, ELD load board included. I'm gonna I'm have that on the next slide. Uh, maintenance, uh, usually it's a monthly expense. A lot, a lot of people like doing 250 a week when in reality, you know, that I'm able to cover one tire in the oil change, not like a big maintenance issue, but you kind of just want to be saving money in your business aside for when that big accident, not accident, big maintenance issue happens. Um, you got income or driver pay. I know a lot of people are investors, so it's not all about what you just taking home, but what the driver is too, if you're looking to invest. Um, taxes, that's a little different. I'm not going to add it on the next slide because that's more so what like you you not everything isn't going to be taxed like every not the gross amount isn't going to be taxed just how it is it's a lot of things that you can write off so that one kind of varies um your truck and trailer payment monthly um factoring <laughs> dispatching if you're using it and your average gross um and for fuel you take your average fuel divided by the miles per gallon you'll kind of see that in the next slide so Let's get on into the next slide so you guys can kind of see my cost per mile. In 2021, when I like when I first operating in a hotel every night, and then what it is now since I don't operate with a hotel, so it's a little bit different. So, average mileage, and this varies depending on how heavy and how tall my loads are. But uh, average fuel cost, I put about 350. Um, when I made this, it was more so in the past um and i had to update it a little bit but i put 350 and then you know uh my average miles per gallon this is when i made it then um i got 11.5 and that's usually true for when i'm loaded with anything from four to seven thousand pounds and the freight is less than four feet like for the most part i get 11 miles per gallon um so the average mile per gallon comes to about 30 cent a mile um, your insurance, my insurance is 18,000 for the year. You have to divide that for a lot of people use a hundred thousand miles for like what, how many miles you'll run out the uh, year. And usually that's basically running 2,500 miles a week for 10 months out of the year. That's basically all it is. Cause 
we gonna get home time, but you can't really predict how much you're gonna get. So for general use, a lot of people just use 100,000 miles. Like usually you'll do 100,000 miles for the year basically. So you divide that by the 100,000 miles, you do miscellaneous and food. This may be way higher than 5,000, but I just use a general number. Um, and you got five cent a mile. My pay, which it, like I said, this is still a little lower. I just put 6,000, I put something realistic that most people will probably make, depending on what they gross, running 10,000 uh, 10, miles per month. So that comes to 72 cent a mile. Factoring is 2.75%. If you guys need a factoring company, check the link in the description with RTS or, or, or OTR. OTR is a little higher. Uh, RTS comes with the fuel card, so check that out. Um, truck and trailer payment, 21,720 for the year, so that comes to about 22 cents per mile. And then maintenance, I did basically 250 a week, 1,000 a month, and then you get 12,000 for the year. And I divided that, of course, by 100,000 miles. And I got 12 cent per mile. And then the hotels for if you're using them, I used it on the low end. I kind of used it if you slept in your truck sometimes and you and you probably reset it in the hotel. But even if you reset in the hotel, you're probably not gonna spend 500 a week. But for the people who do, the people who, like let's say the people who stayed in the motel sixes for the most part, most part and tried to spend around 500 a week, about $100 for every workday. Um, and you get 24,000 for the year. So hotels can be one of your biggest expenses, depending on how much home time you're getting and where you're routing your truck. If you're local, regional, or over the road, like that $500 can be 900 or $800, depending on how you're looking at it. And it can it can be high. So uh, the total cost per mile for the truck to move. So a lot of people are confused when I say stuff like, uh, you know, somebody can run a truck, somebody can run a load for a dollar a mile if it makes sense to get out of a dead area. Why? Because depending on how far you would have to deadhead to the next load, if you just need a load to pay for your expenses, not necessarily pay your salary, but just to keep that truck moving, it can kind of make sense. Like it don't make sense to be quote unquote profitable, but it can keep your truck moving out of a dead zone. And when I say a dead zone, I'm talking about something like Utah, Colorado, uh, Mississippi, states like that where it's pretty dry on freight. And unless you want a dead head, if it's a low pan a dollar amount, going to a better area like Illinois, like uh, Indiana, Ohio, really a Midwestern region, um, some places in the Southeast, even Georgia, you know what I mean? If it's something going to a better, if, if it's a lane going to a better place, it can make sense to take that dollar amount for that day rather than dead heading to a better place, if that makes sense. Um, so for cost per mile, you basically add up everything but the salary, basically. Basically, you just take your salary out and you add up all your other expenses. And um, the total cost per mile with hotels and salary, like what I was running before, and uh, basically anything, anytime before December, when I got the bed installed in the truck, it cost $1.85 per mile just for me to move the truck. And uh, the total cost per mile with salary without hotel, it took out 20 cent per mile. So I'm saving $500 a week just by sleeping in my truck. And like I said, that number can vary depending on how long you staying over the road, if you getting any home time. Um, I'm really saving anywhere from five or six to eight to $900 a week just by sleeping in the truck. And all I'm spending on that end is probably like, you know, $13 for a shower at Pilot. So it's a big difference. I could have probably added that on here, but sometimes, honestly, half of the time, I'm getting that shower for free. That may not be the case for everybody, but it's been the case for me so far. Um, and like I said, this is just something general, so you can kind of get an idea. All of these numbers are variables that can change. Like some of these numbers may be too low. I may need to update these numbers myself. I'm trying to give you guys an idea of how you should be looking at your cost per mile. It's not, it's not random at all. You have to look at expenses 
and make it make sense for a hundred thousand miles that you will run for the year. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, if you guys got any questions or if you guys think I made any mistakes in here, drop it down in the comments, man. Like I said, some of these numbers are variables and I took time into making this reasonable for everybody. If that makes sense, like I didn't try to make the numbers crazy. Like I wouldn't make my salary $10,000 a month because I know a lot of people aren't going to run the uh, <laughs> preferred mileage to make that much. And uh, even if you got the rate, well, you could probably make it. So why it's important, I've been kind of talking about it. Uh, the next steps of booking freight according to your cost per mile and also trying to lower your overhead. Not only to lower your cost per mile, but to maximize profits in your business. Um, I've learned the market enough to know, I mean, enough to dispatch myself. I factor at a low percentage, RTS link in the description with the fuel cards. And I built the bed in my back seat to cut out hotels. And I plan off, and I plan on paying off my trailer note next. So I kind of gave you guys a little bit of my future in this conclusion. So, man, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. Like I said, even for even for the people who really didn't pay attention to the numbers as much, just knowing a general idea and what you'll have to be thinking about before you get over the road, or even if you're over the road and you get and you just kind of winging it and you don't know, plug the numbers into the example and see where you are. Like you may be thinking that you it it costs you a dollar forty or a dollar fifty to operate, and it might cost you a dollar ninety you know what i mean that's a big difference when you're taking that freight because the money you're taking home gonna look way different um like i said this is a more informative video i hope you guys enjoyed it um i enjoyed making it sitting down i know it it's it's a pretty boring topic it's probably not gonna pull a lot of views but i know it, it's gonna help that percentage of people who really take it in and think about it because i mean we're all still learning i'm still learning my numbers as i go like I said, that hotel one was off a little bit. And also the salary, so. But I hope you guys, like I said, I hope you guys enjoy it, man. I took time in this, man. I took time to do this. Like I said, if you got, if you made it to the end of this video, just hit the like button. I know you probably already sub subscribed, but if you ain't, hit that sub button and just drop a comment. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. Let me know what I can do better in these videos to help you guys out. Let me know what you guys want me to drop knowledge about next like if it's some information that you guys don't really know about non city of hotshot and you kind of need a video on it or you want to see more explaining on it and if i know enough about it i'll try to make that video so that's it for this video man stay tuned for the next one peace